Well, I think it's a pretty sad day in California and a sad day for this legislature uh, when a resolution is introduced that asks us to be average, that asks us to simply spend what it actually costs to educate our children, and that becomes a controversial issue. Here in the Golden State, the state that throughout the last century was the destination for people throughout the country to come and fulfill their dreams and make their dreams a reality, a place where, as Ms. Buchanan described, in our generation, the public education system was the finest anywhere in the country, a system that was the example that other states strived to achieve. In that state, we're debating now on this floor whether or not we should be average. That is a pathetic statement of where we are in public education in California. Now, we've heard lots of statistics be thrown out today about uh, what the act whether, where we actually rank on, on per pupil spending. And obviously, if you exclude cost and if you exclude size and if you exclude factors like that, you can manipulate the statistics any way you want on per pupil spending. But here's a few things you can't manipulate. We're last in the country in class size. We're last in the country in teacher counselor ratio. We're last in the country in librarian student ratio. Where's the controversy in that? We've, we, we looked at this issue last year. We had adequacy studies that were prepared by the finest university minds who looked at what California needs to do to, ha to have an adequate public education system. And yes, they talked about the need for greater efficiency. Yes, they talked about the need for reforms and, and accountability. But the part that seems to always get left out of the discussion is that they also called for substantial increases in what we spend on public education because that's the part that no one seems to want to hear. But the reality is if we don't do that, all of the other discussion is moot. Any discussion about accountability, about reform is moot if we're not going to pay the bills to provide for the basics of, of a public education that, that we owe our kids. Now, you know, as Mr. Fewer said, we're going to be going in very shortly to budget chaos again and we're going to have to be deciding where we're going to make cuts and we're going to have a bunch of members who are going to stand up here and say not a penny more in revenues. It's going to all be in cuts. Well, you know, we live in a term limits environment up here and it's easy for us to go back to our voters and say, see, I stood up for you taxpayers because by the time these young people who are up in the gallery watching us debate this, by the time they pay the cost for what we're depriving them of, all of us will be gone. And there will be a new body of legislators here who will have to look them in the eye and tell them why we let them down. I, I, enough is enough. Let's make this the time. Let's make this the year where we stand up and say, you know what? We owe it to our kids to properly fund public education. You know, some of my fiscally conservative friends here think that, think that it's irresponsible to borrow against the future, and you know, you're right. But what else is it but borrowing against the future if you're underfunding public education knowing that you're going to pay more for the consequences of it down the road when none of us are going to be here to be held accountable? That's the height of fiscal irresponsibility. I, I believe very much that a budget is more than a spreadsheet. It's more than a an accounting document. A budget is a reflection of our values. It's an indicator of what we stand for as One a minute, society and as a community. And if we don't fully fund education, if we don't give these young people a chance to succeed, then shame on us as a community. And any of you who wants to go back to your district and claim that you support public education and s claim that you stand in a bipartisan way for education, you need to be prepared to look all those young people in the eye and say, yes, I stood up and I said we were willing to pay to help you succeed in the future. We were able to invest in the future that all of you are going to own. If you can't look them in the eye and say that we support education funding, then don't look them in the eye and claim to be a friend of education. I respectfully ask for your I vote.